And then you saw me, right? Oh my no, god. No, bro. <laughs> nah, they gotta know the whole story. Hi, my name is Faris Jabba. My name is Young Raja. We're not a duo. We're just best friends. Best friends. We rap and stuff. He raps a lot in Malay. I rap in demo. A lot of it. Yeah. We rap English together. Bro, by 6 a.m. I'm working with you guys. No, man. So I was. Uh, 17. 17. Right after. Yeah. Right after O levels. I was acting first. I was I was a freelance actor throughout school and stuff. So I graduated and I saw this poster that asked for actors for our boys to men three. So I went for the audition. I was the first one to be there. My tag was like zero 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 one. Went in. They were literally casting for a funny Indian guy. Literally, right? So I thought I was a pretty funny Indian guy. So I was like, okay, let's try it out. So I was there. I got the role. And then I met him. During Ramadan, I was eating my brother. No, I'm not lying. It's a liar. Ah. I was eating. And then suddenly my brother was like, hey, look, uh, there's a movie that was cast um, cool, in, cool Malay people. Mm. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Go up. So I went. Then they say, oh, these people are in the industry. They don't care about that. They don't care about COVID. So just go there first. So I came there. I was number nine. Okay? He was number one, right? <laughs> I was number nine. nine. Number nine? I was number nine. Okay. Yeah. Then I saw this guy, I was like, he was sitting on the couch. Everybody was sitting on the floor, but he was sitting on the couch and he was doing this. He was reading the script, you know. Like with the tongue and everything, I almost slap him. So he was like, yeah, yeah. Is that really doing that, bro? You were doing that, bro. <laughs> you were doing that, you were like that, you were doing this and doing oh, that. Was <laughs> all that. <laughs> all those things, man, that you were looking at. I thought that um, it would be cool to meet friends uh, because everybody was so boring. Mm. So I went up to him and I was like, yo, bro, dude, you got the role? <laughs> so, bro, you're reading the script, you got the role? And you're like, Hopefully, and I'm like, who's PR, this? totally PR uh, answers. Yeah, yeah, hopefully if I pass the audition, sir. Because he came out of nowhere. <laughs> he came out of nowhere. He was like, boom, like, hey, bro, bro you got the room. I'm like, bro, who's, who's this? <laughs> and back in the days, he used to have big hair, like afro kind of hair. Yeah, he was yeah. very skinny, like, like super, like, just Scrunch, chest uh, scrunch. sunken in and stuff. After he went to NS, you know, he got some, you know, shoulders and stuff. But like, better he was just scrawny as hell. And I'm like, yo, who's this? Who is this guy, man? Then we became friends, and then we did a movie. Yeah. It was like a journey together. It was like five months. The first thing that actually caught my attention was that like he likes Biggie, and I like Pop. So it's like perfect. Yeah. And he looks up to Diddy more than Dre. I like to focus on the business side of things mm. to make sure that we don't fail the structure of things because at the end of the day, it's all careers, right? Mm. And he like to focus on the art side of things, on how to better himself and not this. So when we come together as best friends, it's always like, Bro, this is what you gotta do to improve yourself. And I'm like, this is what you have to do to improve yourself. And it's always yeah. like a constant, you know, yeah. uplift together. Rapping is the most important key in delivering a message. Uh, to me, uh, like in, in, in the whole music industry, uh, mm -hmm. it's the most malleable, it's the best way to, to deliver a message and, and get it across. Uh. The album Good Kid Mad City by Kendrick was the one that actually got me into like proper writing because uh. I, I heard the art of peer pressure and was like whoa he did that no way <laughs> okay i gotta write some stuff but i actually wrote some stuff before when i was like 12 years old because back in the day there was no internet so i just had a part and there's all this this uh rap person and then just did my jota book I'm supposed to use for english but i use for rap <laughs> then i just wrote down all the lyrics of hmm. all what i thought was the lyrics because i don't know the what it meant <laughs> so i just wrote it down and then i stopped because my brother and sister found the book and I was so embarrassed because they made fun of me for like two years. <laughs> for real? Yeah, bro. And they were like, ha ha ha. And they like wake me up and they're like, hey, where you leave this? Where, where you leave this? <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, okay, I'll stop. Ah. It's one of those, like, you know, when you before you sleep, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was that for two years, <laughs> like, bro. Like, cringe. Yeah, but then when I was like 18 or 17, I started. And then after I realized that, okay, I need help, man. I mean, I need influencer. I need a community. Mm. So the guy closest to me, I like, you got this guy. And he's pretty damn good at English so he did his own style and it's perfect because he's more of a chopper like a except for kind of guy I'm more of a racing melodious kind of guy mm. and he's just jello because whenever we make like yeah. tracks together or freestyle together he will always go and go like da 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 it's different yeah it wasn't and like yo let's sit down and figure this out mm. it was naturally like that yeah, so man. when he was like writing rhymes on his book I was like trying to make sound uh, covers and post them on SoundCloud yeah. So if you guys oh, yeah, yeah, find yeah, that, yeah. that's embarrassing as hell. Can you delete them before they... <laughs> I, I gotta... Please. But it's under my actual name, like, 
Oh yeah, please tell them. Please oh. tell all. Please tell the whole world, bro. That is Rajit Ahmed. I got to delete it, bro. I got right to, now. I got to deactivate it. Like. <laughs> Me and uh, Raja likes. We we love to dance, lah. We 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 actually bonded through like just yep. partying, you know, and then going out with friends and stuff like that. Yep. And there used to be this this club called Refuge. And uh, it's uh, it was a circular road, right? Mm, yeah, the so old one. The old one, the the small, the small one. The feng shui was beautiful. It's like the, before you go in, the, bro, <laughs> it was amazing. Before you go in, you gotta go up the stairs, and then the stairs had like, like when you go up the stairs, they had like paintings of like uh, legendary. It was an experience, lah. Yeah, uh, legendary artists and stuff yeah. like that. And you go through another door, to another bouncer, and then you go through the fog, and then you go through that fog, and you see dancers, and then you see the the the, the, the they say like like a throne, you know. You see a throne, the the console or the the DJ booth where nobody can go in, you know. So we see rappers there all the time, you know. We every time Shiggy Shay pulls up, if it's on tour, he knows we're my kids. Booth. Like we're like what? Yeah, so we, 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 we look at them, like, bro. They are so cool, bro. <laughs> then they they came up, and then sometimes they would shake our hands because they know us from somewhere. And then they're like, hey, what's up, man? What's up? Bro? It was literally like that. <laughs> the cool people shook our cool. hands. Cool, so, yeah. I dove deep into uh, local music, uh, mm. and I listened to um, all uh, all rappers uh, from Singapore, uh, like Sheikh Aika and a, a lot of other names. Uh, Elemental Fury. Where was that yeah. started? Where here? Yeah. So we we Even saw Europe, bro, Malaysia as well. Too fat. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Too fat is the is the biggest biggest out of all. Like, it's the biggest what? local influ- influence for for us. They were the ones that introduced uh, hip hop into Southeast Asia in this in this region. So it was so important because without them, that my brother grew up with in their timeline and he actually introduced introduced it to me, trickled down to me, and I I, I showed it to him. That's why going on numbers, Boris, with Joe is the craziest thing that has ever happened in my life.